I'm excited to go over the Word of God today. Excited. We're going to go over a portion in Luke uh, chapter 7. If you want to follow along. Luke chapter 7. <clears throat> and it's an amazing, amazing portion of Scripture. Not that long. But, you know, for what goes on, it really doesn't get the um, acknowledgement that it should in a certain sense. It's not like uh, it's we hear about this too much, but it's a, just a stunning miracle in, in the power of God. <clears throat> and in Luke chapter 7, yeah, starting in first, uh, verse 11, we find that... Uh, I love how it happened. I'm reading from the New King James. Now it happened. Love how he, he's talking about this. Now it happened. It just kind of, you know, we know with the Lord there's no coincidences. He's always in tune with the Father. He was just talking to a centurion in Capernaum uh, the day before, and now... He's, he's moved on from there, and now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain. Small city. But you know, it's 25 miles away from capital. Imagine that. Hardly doesn't even get mentioned. But that's, that's a long way to go back then. Have you walked from uh, here to Salem, New Hampshire lately? <laughs> you know? Or oh, Hampton? That's about it. Uh, you know, it, it, it's just amazing how it doesn't really even mention that fact. That that's a long way to go back then. Did he walk in his sandals 25 miles over those roads? Did he rise up early to, to get there to do this God-ordained appointment? Because we seem to find with Jesus that he's never rushed. No matter how busy he is, how many hundreds of hands he's got on him, how many thousands of people are screaming his name, he's never rushed. He's never rattled. Not once does he freak out. <laughs> he's just such an incredible example for you and me in our lives because in these frail bodies with our limited minds uh, you know some days just get a little overwhelming don't they and some days we are tired we're, we're hungry we've had enough we want to put the sign up on the door and says uh, gone for a walk we'll be home when it's dark you know uh, you just need a little time but we don't find that with the Lord because He's constantly in fellowship with the Father. And we do have access to that same thing in that way. And uh, Peggy and I were talking just a little while ago how one day in glory, when the Lord calls your name and, and you rise from the dead with your glorified body, um, that you'll be like that. So I'm not going to get rattled anymore like that. I have the peace of heaven. Busy day, so what? It's just moving with the flow. Just floating down the lazy river. Walking with the Lord. I love the way that it's so understated. It doesn't even mention them. He's got to be a little weary. He's got to be a little tired. He's just walked, hoofed it 25 miles probably. But now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him. A large crowd. Apparently a large crowd is uh, following him there. Who wouldn't? Would you walk 25 miles with the Lord? Wouldn't it be a great day? Can't we do that today? Can't everywhere I go, I fellowship with the Lord. Those are my best days. I don't get so rattled. I need him every moment of every day. I need him in the truck with me. I need him at the stockyard with him. Don't you need him everywhere? And so he's timed it out perfectly, hasn't he? You know, you just wonder how he does it. It's not a coincidence that at the very time 
that in verse 12, that when he came near the gate of the city, he's there, behold, a dead man is being carried out. The word of life is walking in as a dead man is being carried out. He's timed it from 25 miles away for this God-ordained appointment. And he had to shake his disciples out. Hey, we're leaving two hours before dawn. Maybe he had to spend a little more time around the breakfast campfire. Hey, we're leaving two hours after dawn. But whatever he's done, he's worked it out. So he's moving in as the dead man is being moved out. And look how descriptive verse 12 is. That when he came near the gate of the city, can you picture it? just about ready to go in the town, walking down Main Street, behold, he runs into a funeral procession and a dead man is being carried out in the coffin, probably on their shoulders. Uh, and here we go. Look at this information this one verse gives you. The only son of his mother. Oh, and by the way, she's a widow. This is a big, big problem. This is devastating. No husband to help support the family. No son. The only son is gone. There's no way to make a living now. This is not like with anything to fall back on back then. It's not like today. Um, this woman is in trouble. This woman is really trouble. Probably have to resort to begging. It's a desperate, desperate situation and a large crowd. Jesus has a large crowd with him and a large crowd from the city was with her. Can you picture that? Everybody's me. Little bit of a traffic jam at the city gate, you know? At the, at the traffic light, main traffic light of the city. We got all this going on. And the Lord has left up whenever to make sure that he's walked that 25 miles apparently for this very moment. He's got to do something, show his power, show his glory, show his compassion, show his kindness, show his action. Right now, that we'll, we're still talking about 2,000 years later, it's a great, great example for you and me. Maybe if you and me walked into the city after hoofing at 25 miles, we'd be like, oh, no, not now, please. I'm hungry. Thank you. But not him. He's never rushed. He's never freaking out. He's never too busy. He's an amazing example. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have this example. Whenever I think I'm busy, I remind myself, hey, no one had demands on his time like Jesus. He's our role model. He's our example. We're to imitate him. And look, his first thought isn't like you or me, maybe. Hey, I'm one up. <laughs> Got a chair? No, he had compassion on her. His heart broke for this woman. His heart broke for this woman. Oh, how he loves mothers. Oh, how he loves women. Oh, how he cares for them. And, and he, he said to her, and look at, look at this. He just, there's no evidence at all that he was even asked to do anything. He simply sees the need and steps in. He's a man of action. He's a man of action. He's a man of willingness to help. How are we doing today in that? How are we doing? You know, um, on our best days, when we just go with that flow as the Lord guides us through the day, and we're willing to help, and we're willing to share, and we're willing to be encouragers. On the lousy days of when we're locked in, got to be here, got to be here, pull the book, can't do it, help. Best days are when we're just moving with the Lord, aren't they? Don't we seem to get it all done? 
doesn't it seem to go better? Aren't they the best moments of the day when you've got to encourage somebody? When you've got to share with somebody? This, this is what he's doing. He had compassion on it. And he says, weep not. Do not weep. Imagine that. Don't cry. His heart breaks for this lady. Don't cry. He's so tender. So tender to the to, to, to everybody, but oh, he's so tender and loving to the ladies, and he wants to look out for them. And just that one word when he spoke to Mary, just one word, Mary. Ah, oh, she was inconsolable, but but just one word from Jesus can change everything for Mary, for this woman, for you and me. <clears throat> and then he came. He isn't asked. He's a man of action. He sees the need and kindness and compassion propel him to get involved. Oh, it should be that way for us. It should be that way for the Christian. And I know it is with you. I know I'm preaching to the choir. I know you're always helping. And, 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 and he came and he touched the coffin. And how? Oh, that must have shocked everybody. You don't, you don't go up and touch the open coffin. You know, the, 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 that, that's a no-no. You know, the Pharisees and, 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 and the lawmen, you know, the, the sheriffs like, who want to talk about the law would have had something to say about that and miss the big point that he's willing to help. He's touching this coffin. And those who carried him stood still. Death stops when the Lord of, word of life is right there at this God-ordained appointment. Can you picture the scene? Huge crowd with the Lord. Huge funeral procession. And they stood still. How every eye must have been fixed on Jesus. Reaching out. Maybe they're carrying him and he's up on their shoulders. And reaching out and touching the coffin. And he said, can you imagine that? Standing still in the silence among the hundreds of people. With every eye fixed on him. Jesus begins to speak. And he doesn't say much. He only says a handful of words. But he says... Young man identifies him right off the bat. Young man, I say to you, arise. Isn't that crazy? Why does he speak to this man as if he can hear when he's dead? You know why? Because he can. When it's God in the flesh, when it's Jesus speaking, alive or dead, they hear. He hears. You'll hear. One day, okay, one day, and I'm going to read this right now if you don't mind. And, and I'm going to read First uh, Thessalonians, verse, chapter 4, 16 and 17. One day, you'll hear his voice when you're in the grave. Or one day you'll hear him when you're perfectly alive and you'll hear the voice. And, and in verse 16, 15 and, uh, 16 and 17 in 1 Thessalonians, it says, For the Lord himself will descend with a shout. You'll hear the voice of the Lord. With a voice of an archangel. Well, you'll hear that voice. You'll hear his voice. Oh, by the way, with the trumpet of God. In the dead in Christ, when He calls, they will rise. The dead in Christ will rise first. Depending on when the rapture is, maybe that's you and me. Either way, you're the same thing that we're going over tonight is going to happen to you and me. Going to happen to every believer. When He calls your name, when you hear His voice, and He says, Arise, my love, you will. You'll hear Him. And then we who are alive, either way it sounds good. If we're gone, is, He's going to raise us up. And if we're still living, hey, if you're still alive and remain 
You should be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in your ear, in the air. By the way, nice glorified body you're going to have. You're not rising from the dead to just go into your dead body. You know, in the examples that the Lord did on earth, the dead arose and they were still in their dead bodies. They kept their same bodies. Nothing much was different. Not so with you and me. Not so. You, you will have a glorified body. You'll have a body like the Lord did. You, you, won't, you won't be rattled uh, uh, anymore. You move through the day just like the Lord moves through the day. You know, it's, it's going to be that type. There'll be no aches and pains. Pastor won't be limping in anymore. Nuh uh. And, uh, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Always. And this, I like how it says, hey, by the way, comfort one another with those words. They're great words. They're great words. It's, don't worry. Right up around the bend, the Lord's going to right all the wrongs. Don't worry. And so, young man, I say to you, arise. Do you know that there's three examples in the Bible of Jesus uh, raising somebody from the dead? However, if we read it just a little bit further, we'd find out that uh, when uh, John the Baptist has doubts in prison, that the Lord says, hey, you go tell him. Not that, not that many doubts, that I'm, I'm the one. That the, that the deaf hear, uh, the lame walk, and the dead are raised, and the dead are raised, you know, and it implies that's not uncommon. Now, this one we're going over right now, you're only going to find it in Luke. The other gospel writers didn't even bother, you know, to write. You know, it, it's probably way more than three times. And Lazarus rising from the dead, stunning. What would you do without that? But only John wrote it. Only John. The others didn't mention it, you know? And so, and every time in those three examples, he spoke to the dead person as if they could hear. Why was that again? You know why, huh? Because they could. <laughs> right? And in this one, he says, young man, I say to you, arise. Uh, if we read in just chapter 8, you'd find about Jarius' uh, daughter. And he says... <laughs> little girl arrives speaks to her like she can hear and with Lazarus you know he says Lazarus come forth all three of them oh. it's immediate it's not when I get around to it it's not do CPR for a couple hours and maybe I'll come back to life and it'll oh. boom boom bang bang it's the way it's going to be for you and me you know when he calls there'll be no no hang around, no drastic life-saving measures for you. Nah, -uh. you'll be made alive. It's gonna be okay. And uh, isn't that amazing? How uh, he he speaks to them in, as if they can hear, because they can. And so, in verse 15, so he who was dead sat up and began to speak. Bingo! Can you picture the scene? Hundreds of people. I don't know, maybe thousands. All there. They've just looked at this in stunned silence. They stood still. The coffin may be on their shoulders. And this kid, open casket, whammo! He sits up like he's doing sit-ups. First sit-up must have caught him off guard. Huh? Could you imagine the shock? I'd be stunned. I mean, we've watched too many scary, mo scary movies to not, you know, think what is going on here, you know what I mean? But could you imagine the sight? He speaks the word and immediately he sits up. It's instantaneous. There's a great salvation message there, isn't there? There's a spiritual uh, application for what we're reading here, isn't there? Right? <clears throat> so he who was dead sat up, began to speak, and was presented to his mom. 
Imagine that. And fear. And awesome awe. And awesome uh, amazement at the power of God came on all. And they glorified God saying, A great prophet has risen up among us. Yes, he goes by the name of uh, Emmanuel, God with us. But you can call him Jesus. You know, try to get to know him. He'll raise the dead. He'll raise you to life. He's already raised us to life, spiritually speaking. For God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and the surrounding region. Can you imagine that? One person going from death to life is spoken about in the, in the surrounding region. You know, how many hundreds and hundreds of people in an ever-widening circle are affected because God saved one person, raised one person from, death, from the death. I want to speak about this. This is unbelievable physically. I mean, I, I, it's stunning. And it hardly gets mentioned. We really don't talk about it much. We talk about Lazarus. Oh, hum. He raised someone from the dead. Uh, but how about that centurion? We'll talk about, you know what I mean? That we love. Of course. But because he probably did something like this all the time. All the time. But here's the thing about the spiritual application of this. And Everybody is dead in their sins. In Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it just says that. Just a reminder of how we all were. Right? How everybody on earth is right now because we've all fallen short and we all need a Savior. And you, He made alive. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked. I wasn't sick. I wasn't diseased. I didn't just have a fever. I was dead. I was dead in my sins. Ephesians 2.12 Without Christ, without God, and, with, and without hope, and without God, right smack in the middle of this world. Is where we all were when God found us, didn't He? And He washed us clean. He picked us up. He dusted us up. He made us alive. <clears throat> In which you once walked according to the course of this world. And it's just the normal way it goes. There's a normal course. The river flows. The river flows downhill. And everybody's on it. Wide is the road that leads to destruction, and everybody's on it. It's just the normal course of this world. Unless Jesus Christ interferes, intervenes, I shall say, and by the way, without even being asked, maybe we should think about what he's done for us. Without even being asked. When we were without Christ, without hope in this world, we didn't even have the sense to ask. We didn't know. But He did everything for anybody who's been saved to prepare a way that they would. He did it. He did it. And so we have this, this, this awesome spiritual truth in here where um, the Lord in His mercy uh, has raised every believer from death to life. And in the physical sense, you know, uh, it's going to happen one day in the spiritual sense with our glorified body, but right now we have sat up in the coffin. We were dead men. We were dead. There was no hope. And then He saved us. And He did everything for us, didn't He? You know, when, when you think, you know, when we look at what he did without even being asked, will we get involved without being asked? And I know we do. But we got to be on the lookout for times to encourage. we got to be on the lookout. These helpless, 
hopeless people who don't know the Lord, out we are one of them. They, they can't ask themselves. They don't even know enough to ask. We have to be willing to, to go tell them about the, 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 the King, about the Word of Life, so that they can even sit up in the coffin. You know? They're just sipping. Like you and I, we, we were just sipping cocktails on the Titanic. You know? Don't even know. Maybe you're having a half decent time. Oh, Muriel, isn't it lovely out here tonight? <laughs> yes, Hollingsworth. <laughs> Look at the moonlight glistening off that iceberg. <clears throat> we can't even know that disaster is ahead in a sense. We have to be willing to get involved without being asked. And I know that we all say, oh, I'm not going to tell anybody about faith. I'm not doing that. Uh, if they ask me, I might, yeah, but they won't ask. They don't know enough to ask. You and I didn't ask. But look what he's done for you without being asked. Looks what, look what he's done for your family. Every single day you and I wake up, it's because he said it was okay. You breathe his air. You don't even think about breathing because he just gives you a breath. And if you even stop and think about breathing for a minute, do you know how messed up you'd get? We could do that right now, but we're not gonna. Just one minute, think about taking the next breath. I gotta take another breath. Another, be, after one minute, you'll be like, oh. We just do it. We don't think about it. We <laughs> breathe his air. We drink his water. He's the one that put it. We eat his food. We receive his protection. It's his comfort. It's his provision. Every day of our life, even before when we were stubborn rebels, when you didn't know enough to ask, when you didn't know enough, enough to thank him, when you could have cared less, when I could have cared less, but, but now we know. We, we know because He's raised us up. We sat up in our coffin, if you were. We heard His voice, but now we didn't ask Him. We didn't know enough to ask Him to leave heaven. Now we understand what He gave up. We didn't ask Him to be born and go through the birthing process and, and be born God as a baby. God as an infant? That's crazy. Who would do that? Just a loving God. Just somebody who's a man of action. Just a God who is a God of action. That's willing. There's a willingness. He'll do anything that you might be with Him forever. Anything for you that you might be saved. He's the one that lived a perfect life that we couldn't. He is the one that never got rattled. Don't you love it? I just walked 25 miles. Sure, I'll raise the dead. I'll sleep later. He's perfect example. He's perfect. We can't ever find one fault in him. Because he can't sin. He's the, he lived the perfect life that we can't. He shed his blood. We, you didn't ask him to be crucified. You didn't ask him to do that because you didn't even know. We didn't even know. We knew a little religious stuff. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Why do they call it Good Friday? We didn't know. All we knew was enough to be dangerous. We knew a little bit of the law. We could act holy. We were sheriffs. We were lawmen. We didn't even know grace and mercy and kindness. He's the one that was betrayed for you, for me. He's the one that carried his own cross up the hill. He's the one that was crucified. You didn't ask him. This is all that he's done. He's the one that went into the grave. He's the one that rose again. He didn't wait till you asked him. He didn't wait till you asked him. Because we'd never ask. We'd never ask. We're dead in our sins. We're without Christ. We're without hope. We're without God. Right smack in the middle of this world, living the life we were living. 
right? We didn't even know enough to ask, but he gave us a way that we could. And even now, he rose from the dead. He ascended in that glorified body, giving us hope. Encourage one another with this. One day you'll hear his voice. And guess what? I'll see you up in the air. <laughs> He's coming in riding on the clouds. You and I are going to be there. Going to be a good day. Whether we're in the grave or, or whether we're still standing and breathing, either way, it looks good. Either way, the future looks bright, doesn't it? Yeah, because of him. Because he did all that when we didn't ask. But oh, how we appreciate it now. Huh? And there's the salvation message in this. It's a beautiful salvation message. Is that he does everything. And that... When, when He gives us that new life, boom! It's immediate. We don't strive. We don't struggle. I'll never do things again. I'm going to try to uh, uh, work. I'll take some classes. I'll work some courses. I'll, 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 be met. I'll try to improve. And boom! You're forgiven. Boom! You're holy. Boom! You're righteous. You're justified. Just as if you never sinned. What sin? It's immediate, just like this young man, boom, rising from the dead. Sat up with a sit-up. Boom. First sit-up caught him off guard. No need to do a set of a hundred, huh? <laughs> well, you can do that in a coffin. But that's what he did. This is a salvation message, that we didn't do anything. But we can't add anything to it. He already did it, and he did it immediately. And he did it without us even being asked. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for, for this God-ordained appointment where you just spoke a few words and there was life. And you, can do, you did the same thing for everybody in this room, Lord. And if you're hearing this message on your phone, on your computer, on Facebook, have you been raised to life? Have you? He's done everything. He's done everything. And he didn't wait for you to ask him. He's done everything that you might know. Him. He wants to love you. He's extending his hand to you. Receive him now. I encourage you to receive Him now. Don't wait. Let today be the day of your salvation. He wants to help you. There is no need to walk this road alone without God. You can't do anything about your sin, but He can and He already has. You want your sins forgiven? It's like that. Do it now. Accept Him. Say something like this. Lord Jesus, I believe You are the Son of God. And I know, I ask you to forgive me, to raise me from being dead in my sins to life. Give me a new life. Give me a new hope, Lord. I want to know you. And if you said that prayer and meant it, congratulations. Your life will never be the same. I'd encourage you to drop us a line at Crossroad Christian Church, 15 Lynn Street in Peabody, Massachusetts. We'll make sure you have some information, and we'll make sure you have a Bible. We'd love to hear from you. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' name.